all right what we're now authorized to do because we found that all of our anchors are intact there's no damage there's a little bit of cracking from uh, the freezing and thawing uh, uh, in, in one of the anchors that I'm a little bit concerned about but not a big deal what we're going to do now is get ready to aerate and decompact the critical root zone remember we measured the DBH at 20 and 7 8 let's call it 21 inches and times five uh, gives us about a hundred that's eight and a half nine feet so we have a nine foot skirt ANSI recommends six to nineteen and we could spread it out but the greenhouses that are projected to be built under here are going to be very close and we only have uh, this um, 10 foot skirt and we're going to establish that with radial trenching and since this is on a grade we're going to adjust the, the radials to a to a uh, circular what do you call it Jesse uh, uh, the, the circular hub and spoke pattern a, a circular hub and spoke pattern where we're going to slow the water down we've got plenty of fertile soil up top we freed up the collar and so if we make the continued tree preservation actions as recommended this tree should end up being a great long-term asset to the property and it'll provide shade in this area for years to come all right, we have completed the root collar excavation and some of the clues that you look for when you do that are how much depth is going to be required uh, when you radial trench to aerate and decompact this area of the critical root zone that uh, the building that's going to be placed here the reason we're brought into this scenario at all is there's going to be a building placed here when they want to know Will this tree stay here? Will it fall on the building? Will it survive to thrive? Two very important questions. And what we've done is we've looked in here. We found that we've got pretty good soil conditions. But as you can see, we've got a number of nice fine fibrous roots that are mixed into the soil. And contrary to what we find in a lot of our scenarios, we see that we've got a depth of about, this is a three, six, nine inches. That's uh, exactly what you want. So we've got arable soil, but it's gonna have to be decompacted and mixed and stimulated in a radial and spoke pattern. And the area behind here, which is natural and unencroached upon by any of the field dirt is going to be incorporated and stirred. And so we're continuing as we suggested to you a process where one tree preservation action logically leads into the next and it's up to you as the owner to uh, uh, illustrate all of these individual actions for the owner so that they know what's going on we're going to aerate decompact radial trench we're going to uh, uh, biostimulate, we're going to incorporate existing uh, uh, organic matter in the critical root zone on the back side that has not been filled in. And once they understand that all of these actions bleed into one another to make a nice, healthy tree that is risk-free, they'll consent and you'll have a job. And that's a perfect example of how the cores can vary in consistency just within a distance of five or six or eight feet. And I'll take another one from right out here. And we can see that we've got nice clay topsoil here there's still no roots in it and then we've got that soil there and then here is what we refer to as true ground level right here where you've got the red clay 
and some of this other material here that we refer to as geotechnical. In other words, it's just a, uh, a mass and we see at the very bottom we're starting to get just a little bit of the rooting from the tree and so that rooting is what we're actually able to see right there. And as we can see, in this distance out from here, we've got a different soil profile just within a period, just within a space of a few feet. You can see where the topsoil is much thicker. You can see where you've got some rotted bark, some organic matter, and a little bit of a tree rooting uh, 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 effect right in there. We've got some of that in there. That shows some roots right there. And then here is true ground level where we've got basically impenetrable red clay. And that gives you a real good idea of how variable these disturbed sites are. In the critical root zone of this tree we have pulled three or four core samples and the uh, layer of organic topsoil or the, uh, um, the layer of soil containing any organic matter at all has varied from one or two inches over here to as much as four or five inches over here and so it's important that you test in several areas all around here so that you know exactly what kind of condition the critical root zone of the tree that you're about to tell this owner is going to survive and thrive. All right, we're going to get ready to aerate and decompact the critical root zone of the tree. The 10 foot skirt, five times the diameter, about 10 feet, which is a circle around it. And we're going to use the hub and spoke pattern, a radial trench, and the uh, half moon um, um, uh, uh, circular uh, um, um, trench on grade. This is all for a combination of erosion control. We need to slow the water down coming off this hill and uh, 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 so that it has time to absorb into this very dense soil. As you can see, I can only get three or four inches of the, uh, of the uh, compaction tool in here so you know that he's not going to be able to go real far in there without heavy duty pressure from the uh, air gun and once again we're using the big boy we're not using this little guy my guys do not use this small gun and these um, very tight clay bound environments they'll use them for blowing mulch cleaning off the sidewalks in the street and other things like that and so the critical root zone radial trenching we're going to stir it but before we stir it we're going to have to make sure we have topsoil sufficient enough to cover the surface so that we don't expose roots that have been lured up by years of drought and dry weather very close to the surface. You could aerate those and if you didn't have something to cover them with right away, then those fibrous roots, which are so vitally important for feeding the tree, could dry out and you would kill them. You would in fact be doing more harm than good. And so there are some subtle uh, nuances, some wrinkles to your tree preservation actions that are extremely necessary. We're trading our energy, what you see given through the air tool, we're trading air and air spaces that we have down below us, water that we're going to put in here through irrigation, water, air, nutrients with our biostimulation and energy from our tools that you see here and we as homeowners are trading these big four elements for the ecosystem services of shade, beauty and the aesthetic value that we have. This happens to be a big uh, a nut producing tree and we've got all kinds of wildlife coming out of the woods that, do that, that, that uh, take advantage of this and the owners happen to be very high on keeping that balance. It's the balance 
in their designed ecosystem that we need to be sensitive to. And so now we're going to move you right into aeration and decompaction using the supersonic air tool. Pay attention.